It's been far from the ideal start to the league campaign for Rovers with three straight defeats so far this month. While the display here against Wimbledon on the opening day wasn't good enough, performances have improved since then, with a lack of cutting edge now the main problem. The latest opponents, Portsmouth, are having no such problems and they arrive in South Yorkshire as just one of two sides in the division to still have a 100% winning record. It promises to be a really interesting clash of styles at the Keepmount Stadium as Rovers take on Portsmouth. Hello, welcome back and thanks for joining us for our latest edition of the Inside Rovers pre-match show. Joining me on the show tonight, editor of the Doncaster Free Press, Liam Hoden, and Rovers defender Cameron John. Cam, welcome to the show again. How are things? Yeah, yeah all good, all good, Rob. Uh, thanks for having me. Liam, a, a difficult start to the season. How are you feeling after a, a busy couple of weeks? It has been busy. We're, this season was supposed to be a bit quieter, but it's been relentless so far. Uh, but yeah, encouraging signs, but, but plenty to do. Yeah, before we get into it then, another jam-packed show tonight. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll hear from boss Richie Wellens on the need for patience despite results not going Rovers' way. Cam talks to us about competition for places within the squad and the work he's put in throughout pre-season. We hear from chairman and secretary of the club Doncaster Titans, Andrew Robson. And we have the latest away fans feature as Aaron Challoner chats to Pompey fan Jake Smith about the early season pace setters. Cam, a bit of a frustrating start to the season then. We're three league games in now. That one at Accrington last time out where you featured in the, the second half as Rovers reverted to a, a back three. What did you make to it overall? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one to take, I think. Um, Judging on the quality that we've got in our squad and what we faced against, it was one of them where if we just showed our qualities, then we had the beating of them. And obviously the goal early wasn't the best of things for the team, but for the second half, we showed the fight and we just got to start that from minute one because there's a lot of determination, a lot of pride and a lot of desire in this team. So we just got to keep that going for 90 minutes and, you know, results will come. Like, I think we're all very confident that it will come, but it's just getting that, that click in there and, and but hopefully it will come and hopefully it's tonight or today. Given the, given the, the things that have happened throughout pre-season and the players missing through injury or obviously the, the isolation period, yeah. how big a difference do you feel there is between where Rovers are and perhaps where they should be at present in terms of fitness? More Massive difference. We haven't had a clean pre-season. Um, like you said, we've had many Covid misses and then the injuries to Faye, Geordie, Tails. It, it just hasn't been ideal. So we haven't even had a full time to work with the whole squad so it's just trying to piece everyone together as when we get everyone so right now you're not seeing the best of us but once everyone comes back and hopefully as the games go on you'll see uh, what we're truly about. Liam we've seen over recent days that the Accrington one was a, a bit of a different test given the opposition but on a wide open pitch at Hillsborough less than a week ago Rovers put on probably their well in fact it was their best performance of the season with and without the ball for 60-65 minutes and that's where that fitness comes into play late on isn't it a team who in Sheffield Wednesday who've had a full pre-season under their belts definitely it, it come the, the goal came at the wrong time just after 70 minutes as Rovers were getting tired legs as you said due to that pre-season and obviously Wednesday they were able to bring on two or three players fresh that made a big difference and helped give them a, a bit of a boost as well so that's where you're going to see that and, and probably is going to take a couple of weeks I think Richie Wellen said that he felt at least two weeks behind and, and kicking off the season were perhaps where they would have been after the Harrogate game so it's going to take a little bit of time to get up to speed. There's a a little bit of panic, as you would expect from supporters on social media. We obviously see a fair bit of it off the club account. You the same off your account, being the, the editor of the, the Doncaster Free Press. So how important is it that the fans just, just stay patient, stay with the team? Because again, a home game against Portsmouth, who are currently top of the table, is where it all could turn around. I think that if, thing, if it had been a really disastrous start to the season in terms of performances, I could understand the panic a little bit more. I do think there's been promising signs. It was always going to be difficult, as Cam touched on, that to, to carry that same sort of performance from Hillsborough 
to, to the Wham Stadium on, on Tuesday night, given the type of team that Accrington are at home. But I, th I still think there were positive signs in that in terms of what were going on in midfield. I think th at the back and, and in the middle of the park, there's some really, really promising signs going forward. We know of the issues up front. We know that we're relying on, on youth and inexperience in that area while the uh, injured players come back. But it just feels like it it will click into place at some point. It might take a little bit of time. Richie Weldon has made no secret about that. I don't think anybody at the club has made a secret that this is a bit of a rebuilding season. It's not. It's going to be a few steps in before things start to click. Uh, that's where I, I, I hold out confidence that, that things will come good this season. But again, Richie Weldon has said it himself. There might be some pain to get there initially. But things, I, I do think there's some real positive signs. Cam, what's it like being amongst the group when results maybe don't go your way? And of course, you have to stay positive. The, the reality is there's 43 games left in the league season. Nothing is won yeah. or lost in August. You can be top of the league and struggle at the end of the season. You can be towards the bottom right now and still have a very good season. So in the group, what's sort of being said on a day-to-day -day basis? Just keep being positive. Like There's no pressure on our end. Like we've, The gaffer's given us the freedom to go and play and I think we just got to show that more and there's a lot of belief in, in the squad. We know we've got very good players in the team and we know we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. I think, like you both touched on, Chef Wednesday, we showed we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with arguably one of the best teams in the division. So we just got to show that on a daily basis and, you know, we keep working hard in training, we're putting it in. So the effort and the desire is there. You just need that bit of bit of luck on on a match day, which you know every team wants. But hopefully we can get that soon. But it's all about patience, and all we all we do is we just keep being calm and being patient because we know it will come because we've got the footballing ability to show. How much does it help having somebody like Noel Hunt on the grass every day? Somebody whose spirits are quite often high, no matter the weather, <laughs> no matter the results, and somebody like that to just keep spirits high when they may be suffering a little bit. Yeah, no, definitely. Hunt he's a, a real a real character. Um, he he loves it. He he just loves being out on the grass, and he loves and he's a he's a real footballing. He's a player's player. So, but he does demand, and as much as as much as he wants to have a joke and have a laugh, but it's all about a bit all the seriousness and all the realness. And when it's time to work, we work, and that's what we are as a squad. We know when it's good time to joke and have fun, but in the meantime, we know the results haven't gone our way, so we're putting that right on the training ground, and we're just getting work and getting the work done. Yeah, goals have been a problem for Rovers so far this season, but Richie Wellens is confident that hard work will bring around a change of fortunes very soon. We have to believe that we're going to score goals. We're getting in the areas, but it's belief and it's just repetition after repetition. We keep practising and keep believing. We've dominated Sheffield Wednesday, we've come here and we've, we've, it's been an uglier game, but we've still got the ball in the areas, we've still got balls in the box. So it's, it's not a system, we, we change the system second half just because of the, the conditions and, and, the, and the environment that you're in here. So, um, I, again, it's, it's a tough one because we're just not having a little bit of green. Like I say, Ben Close pulls it back. Usually you have someone tapping in. Little, you know, Thiago should bring it down his chest and he's got a, a, a free shot from eight yards. He decides to head it in, into the back of him. Kyle Noyle should hit the target at the end. So little things are going against us. We've just got to keep working. We've got to keep believing, keep working. Is there anyone outside of the starting eleven who you go, you know what, fair enough, they're showing me enough on the training part to, to merit a start? Cameron John, since the, the first day that I walked in, Cameron's a good professional, trains properly and it's no coincidence that when he, he, he come on 40 minutes ago, he produced a performance like that, settled in, ready to go and I thought he was outstanding when he went on. Liam, the manager, clearly frustrated that Rovers aren't quite getting the results at present, but you can see how much effort's going into it from his part in making sure that they're as prepared as they can be to, to go out there and get a result. I think there's no doubt in terms of over the preparations into into games he's spoken many times about the detail that he goes into. It is obviously a frustrating period, you know. He doesn't like not winning football matches, it's, it's plain to see. But I think you can also see the, the process that they're on. It's interesting that how torn he was of a switching to 3 5 2. He mm. doesn't want to do it. He's said it several times, I don't want to do it. But because it goes away from my principles. But we've seen with results perhaps not coming in that is. is, is is turned to these measures, which again is a positive sign. He's not just beating, uh, uh, you know, a drum mm. that's uh, that's not producing. Cam, when things aren't happening at one end of the pitch, as a defender, does it make it a little bit more edgy? The fact that if you know you're going to get three or four goals in a game, if one goes in at your end, it's not the be all and end all. However, if you are struggling to put the ball in the back of the net, as we saw on Tuesday night, if one goes in, you know you're going to struggle for a result. 
yeah it's it's that catch 22 you can't obviously you always have faith that your team's going to score but in the back of your mind you always do think please just get one because in this league anything can happen it, goals just can come out of nowhere so yeah as a defender you always got that in the back of your mind that you you want to you want your team to score as much as possible so it's much easier on you but I think as a defence and as long as we can keep it to a clean sheet or even one goal I think that's as good as we can do and if we keep the goals to a minimum and keep our team in the game I'm sure that we're gonna we're gonna find the back of the net and but that's on us just to keep the pressure off them to keep the goals out so as long as we keep them out then hopefully they start firing in down that end. What did you make to the, the switching tactics? We saw it against Wimbledon as well, but you came in the left side of a back three against Accrington on, on Tuesday night, and it seemed to be your outlet of, of diagonal balls that caused Accrington the most problems. <laughs> yeah, like, I think, like you said, um, we haven't really worked on anything of three in the back or none of none of that system. So I think it's just kind of a going in and a real game feel and understanding of what, what the game requires. So, yeah, on a Tuesday night, it was more of a long ball game and... We don't want to play that. I don't really want to be playing that a lot because we just want to play football. But sometimes the game and whatever the occasion may require that. So, yeah, Tuesday night, that's what was required. But it's it's just a real game understanding and, you know, doing what I need to do with the time I've got. For you then, you might not have had the game time that you would have liked so far this season, but you have earned praise from your teammates and from the manager as well. Talking after the game at Accrington, Richie was asked who of the players who maybe not have started every game have impressed him the most and he, he didn't hesitate, he came straight out with your name. Why, why do you think that is? What, what would you put that down to? I know it's hard to, to talk <laughs> about yourself. Honest, no, honest, I, I, I don't know. That, that's up to, that's for the gaffer to, to tell you but I've just been getting my head down and knuckling down to be fair. It's obviously a scene, it's a new season, new manager, new staff so I've just got my head down and just seize the opportunity because at the end of the day, you never know what can happen, and I'm always always staying ready. And yeah, I may not be in playing the minutes I would I would like, but as long as I stay ready, anything can happen. And in the time I've got, I hope I've showed that you know I can start. And but it's a long season, so there's plenty of games to go. So we'll, we'll wait and see. But yeah, I've just gave myself the right um, building blocks to to uh, push on now. It's another new experience for you, isn't it? Still early on in your career. You've had the loan move from Wolves and, and got out yeah. and played football. You've then took the plunge to go permanently to a, a club that you knew well. Yeah. Now you've had a change of manager. So still at a young age, what is it, 22 next week, yeah. you're sort of getting everything quite early on to be prepared for the remainder of your career, aren't you? No, 100%. Um, and it's, like you said, it's just a real learning curve and having to do, navigate the world of football is such a topsy-turvy um, place to be in as you both know so yeah it's been it's been quite a, a journey so far but I'm learning every day and that's all I can do and like you say I'm only 22 so I'm going to experience a lot more um, in the future but for now yeah it's been great and just cracking on and just keeping my head down and seeing where that takes me. Liam of course Cam has not had the game time he would have liked there's three players who've not kicked a ball in anger at all for Rovers this season Okunabiri, Hiwula and Taylor three players who you feel added to this team at present and it'd be a different story in terms of results. Certainly would, you know, they've got the pace and the directness of, of Taylor and Awula. We know all about Faye's quality and, and his finishing ability. It'd make a huge difference at this time, so fingers crossed that they can be back sooner rather than later. Mm. The Club Doncaster Titans, incidentally, our guests at Saturday's game. Here's Chairman and Secretary Andrew Robson on why the Titans are so special to him. My name's Andrew Robson, I'm Chairman and Secretary for Club Doncaster Titans. I first became involved with the club when my son was formally diagnosed with autism. We tried different things throughout Doncaster, different activities, even different football clubs, but he just couldn't take to anything, it just wasn't a, the right fit. We joined Club Doncaster Times about four years ago and we haven't looked back since. We try to make football accessible to anybody who wants to play, um, male, female, whether you have a disability or not, mental health difficulties our own experience with our own son we, we, we try different different like i said different sports different uh, football teams it's hard to pick, put your finger on exactly what it is but um i think it's about sort of acceptance and, and feeling comfortable in your own skin in, in the environment you're in and i think club doncaster titans provides that
It's been a stressful few weeks for students at the Club Doncaster Sports College having received their exam results recently and Principal A.D. Turnpenny believes they deserve a lot of credit for all their hard work throughout the pandemic. This year we've had 127 further education sports students on roll with us and we've had a further 80 plus studying higher education with us on our degree courses in partnership with Doncaster College. It's been established since 2008 and we've very much so grown year on year. It's not been a typical year, obviously at the back end of last year we were affected by the pandemic and the lockdown and the students had to adjust and this year it's been even more so if anything. I have to say the staff have been fantastic in adapting delivery styles and the students have been amazing in, in taking on board those styles. I think we've all learned a bit more about Zoom and things in the last year or so. The results have been fantastic, we've had 100% pass rate across our level 2 and level 3 sport qualifications and in terms of our retention we have we've managed to keep 97.7% of the students who, uh, who started with us across the year which is fantastic really considering the year we've had, you know we've not been able to deliver things normally but as I say both staff and students have adapted and we've been able to make sure that the guys have still got a high quality education and I think the results show that really. At the minute we're recruiting for September, there are one or two spaces still left available for both our level two and level three courses and if anybody's interested we can just go to our website to apply clubdonkersportscollege.co.uk Liam then, Portsmouth the visitors at the keep mount this weekend, a team who started off flying, three wins from three, not conceded a goal. Of course, the, the threat of John Marquis up top. How impressed have you been with the job that Danny Cowley's done after his first pre-season at the club? Really impressed. I'm a, bit, a little bit surprised that they've, they've made such a strong start, if, I, if I'm being honest. I think there, were a lot, there weren't quite as much attention on them as what there usually is uh, heading into this season. Obviously, there's a lot of clubs making noise in the, in the transfer market. They seem to have gone about things a bit more quiet, uh, but... They're obviously reaping the success. We know how good a manager Danny Cowley is. We know that they will always have a decent squad down there. and uh, it's, So it's proved so far this season. Cam, they're a club at this level and the, the size of clubs seems to be filtering down, doesn't it? They're probably yeah. seven or eight now, former Premier League teams minimum. So a club who have gone under the radar, but you sometimes wonder how, given the size of them. Yeah, um, Portsmouth have always been a massive club in this league and a massive club in, in England. So for them to be doing so well is, is a credit to their new management staff and and what they've been able to achieve. But they're coming here, they're coming here and I want a result. So as much as they're doing well, hopefully we can start our season off with a win against them. And Rovers do have a fairly decent record against them as well. Did the double yeah. over them last season. So yeah. sometimes that type of thing can get into players' heads. I know a lot of Rovers players weren't here last season. A lot of Portsmouth players have probably moved on since then as well. But it's in the fans' mind, isn't it, as well? The 1,000 or, yeah. or so Portsmouth fans making the trip up might be thinking, a bit of a bogey ground here. Yeah, 100%. Um, we've also got a player that was played in both in, in closely. So mm. so he, kn he knows he knows about, about this fixture very well. So hopefully... He's on the winning side this time as well. But yeah, no, definitely the fans should be excited. Um, beat them twice last year and there's no reason why we can't bring that confidence from last year into this year. And the players that were were here last year should ooze the confidence in knowing that we, we've got the ability to play them, especially on this, on this pitch here. And it should be, again, another carpet for us to play our football. So yeah, we should be very confident. They're another team, as I said, with a new manager, albeit having gone in towards the back end of last season. But Danny Cowley has a, a history of, of doing well, particularly with Lincoln. And then obviously Huddersfield kept them up and, and didn't keep his job. So perhaps a bit unfortunate there not to still be managing in the championship. Yeah, he's a, he's a manager with, with pedigree. And like you said, he's done very well in, in the game of football. So he's going to set up his team very well um, and they're going to come in and try and get the win. So I expect nothing less, but hopefully we can show what we're about and get our season rolling and hopefully at his expense. So, so yeah, let's, let's hopefully we get the win and uh, show them what we're about and show the fans and the whole league that Doncaster's here to play this year. Liam, as the heavens begin to open on <laughs> us a little bit here at the keep mode, John Marquis, the main threat, everyone would recognise that, 67 goals in 153 appearances for Rovers. You still sometimes think that maybe he didn't quite get the recognition while he was here that he, he might have deserved? I think that's definitely the case, but I think his, his, his contribution has been recognised more 
since he's perhaps left and, and, and realised how tough it is to replace a player who has that ability in front of goal. He's, he's had a, a tricky time of it himself down at Portsmouth, but as we saw with that goal against Crewe the other week, just how lethal a finisher he can still be. And of course, with the Rovers centre-halves, whether it's Cam, Roe, Sean and Tom, they're in for a physical battle against him. He'll run and run and run and he'll put his body where a lot of players wouldn't put themselves. Yeah, as much as his goal scoring, I think his, his top attribute is his work rate. The amount of running he, he did when he were here were tremendous. So, yeah, as you say, it's going to be a difficult afternoon for uh, Cam and his colleagues. Cam, when it, the, the way that Portsmouth play, they tend to play with one striker. Whether it's two centre-halves or three centre-halves, how do you go around making sure that he's picked up? Because it's not like you've number up and go yeah. two on two or one on one what, what does yeah. that look like for a centre half <laughs> just going to have to go 1v1 really and if one's spare one's spare but just mm. especially a player of his quality and we all know what his quality is like we just definitely just got to make sure we're tight on him and make sure we keep him at bay because like you said he's a goal scorer and if he's in front of that goal mm. he's lethal so we've got to make sure we keep him out there are the guys views then and here's Portsmouth fan Jake talking to Aaron Chalder about his side start to the new campaign. Hi there, everybody. Aaron Chalner representing Forever Football, DRFC, your Dunks Rovers fan channel, here with another away fan interview here for Inside Rovers pre-game show. I'm here with Jake, who um, who does uh, the Football Hour on Express FM, but also does the Football Hour in podcast form as well. A huge Portsmouth fan. Jake, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. Uh, looking forward to, to chatting about football, looking forward to Saturday's game. I know there's a lot of excitement building for that one for, from both sets of fans. So, yeah, ready to get stuck in. So let's talk a little bit about Portsmouth, first of all. You guys are off to a flying start under Danny Cowley. Um, three wins from three, nine points on the board. The team seems to be going well. Signings joined together with potentially more by the end of the window. It seems like everything's on the up for Portsmouth at the minute. Yeah, it does. Um, we're in a, a great position at the moment, three games into the season, um, three wins in a row, like you say, zero goals conceded. We look very, very tight at the back. Um, we, we look unbeatable, to be honest. And uh, in the three matches we played so far, uh, the first game, Fleetwood away, we had a few problems. There was a few excuses which could have been made. Um, we had our central midfielder, in um, Sean Williams pull out with an injury in the warm up, so we had to put uh, Conor Ogilvy on his debut and left back into central midfield, and he's never played in that position before. So we had a bit of a uh, a light squad for the opening game. We had three academy players on the bench, uh, but we still came away one nil winners, and we played pretty decent too. Um, yeah, second game we completely blew Crew out of the water. Fantastic performance, only ended two nil. We could have had three or four, maybe even five. Um, perhaps just need to tweak it a little bit in front of goal, be a bit more clinical. Your plays, of course, uh, a former player of ours, John Marquis. Um, how has he done so far this season? And do you think that he could even do better this season? Yeah, he's off the mark this season. Um, got his first goal of the campaign uh, last Saturday against Shrewsbury. Um, decent goal as well. Uh, and we all know what a, what a bagsman John Marquis can be at this level. He's come under a bit of criticism from... You know, not all supporters, don't get me wrong. You know, everyone's got an opinion in football. That's what we love about it. But last season, under Kenny Jackett, the previous season, hasn't looked the same player as perhaps he was at Doncaster. You know, um, I don't know if that's if we're expecting too much of him. But then you look at his statistics last season, he still scored 16 league goals and 18 in all competitions. So it's not actually a bad return. And, you know, for, for a side that finished outside the playoffs, it's not a bad return. But now we've got this new manager and we've got Danny Cowley. He likes to play the high press, high intensity, attacking football, you know, ball on the ground, playing to the strengths of our strikers. And even mentally as well, just the kind of person that Danny Cowley is, the way he addresses himself to media, to the team and to the fans. I just think it's going to be something different this season. I think John Marquis could learn a thing or two from Danny Cowley. I think he'll be a different kind of animal. So he started the season, one goal in the first three games. I think now that he's got that goal, he's got that confidence, he's got the backing of the new manager, I, I think we'll un unleash him and, and, and gradually he'll, I think he can get 20 goals this season. I think he can kind of start to rebuild that faith with the fans. You know, I've been there many times with, with Pompey, wins, draws, uh, defeats as well. It's never an easy game. It's never one of those matches where you think oh, we can come away with a, a 
two or three goal deficit. No, it's, it's always narrow. So no, I, I would obviously, with our form at the moment, put us as favourites. But, you know, these runs have got to come to an end at some point and, and Doncaster wouldn't be, you know, the, the worst team to end that run. You know, it, it wouldn't be the kind of shock. Would you like it if, if we'd have come up against Morecambe? Uh, or well, actually they're, they're doing pretty well now actually aren't they so I can't even say Morgan but do you know what I mean it's you always have that kind of expect, expectancy with Doncaster that they're going to perform at some point and, and no matter how they start their season they're probably going to be within that top half push in next, uh, you know back end of the season yeah and it should be a very interesting game so finally then uh, score predictions me personally I've gone with a 1-0 Rovers win what are you thinking um, I'm going to reverse it. I'm just going to go one nil Pompey win. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it's always a, a, a tight game, you know, between these two teams. Never truly confident going to the keep mode. And um, but I, you know, I do think we've got the strength to get over the line. We've we look solid at the back, and I just can't see that ending yet. I think we've still got a few games in us before we start to have a few more questions asked. I think we would miss one nil. Very interesting indeed. So, uh, Jake, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Look forward to Saturday. Cam, a really big game then on Saturday. Rovers with a chance to get themselves up and running in Skybet League One. Ahead of a big week, Stoke away in the Cup on Tuesday, Rotherham in a big South Yorkshire derby at the end of it. What could three points against Pompey do for, for morale, not only in the group, but in the stadium as well? Oh, do everyone the world are good. That just A win would just do everyone confidence and you know for the team, and especially, like you say, going into a big league um, cup game on the Tuesday night, that would just do us all all the world are good going up against a championship team so but it's only one game at a time so we've got to think of Saturday and hopefully we just get the win Liam of course Richie Wellens will be itching just to get that first one under his belt won't he as a manager you often see strikers want to get that first goal as a manager at a new club he'll be so desperate for that first three points yeah particularly with how things you know after three three defeats to start the season he's going to be desperate for that and it'll just back up everything that he's been saying it'll deliver that confidence that they are on the right track it might take a little bit of time but they're heading in the right direction and of course Portsmouth themselves will be coming here thinking three wins in a row why not make it four but that's what something Rovers have got to guard against I think they might also be looking at this as their toughest test so far mm -hmm. uh, you know it's been a a fairly kind start to the season for them, but they've took advantage of that and we've seen some crazy results uh, so far already. So they'll know they're being for a tough one when they come here. Hmm. With a thousand or so away fans expected, Cam, that sort of atmosphere can just lift Rovers a little bit and it can act as the 12th man, even if it's a lot of away fans, can't it? Yeah, 100%. The crowd is, is so important and if they get behind us, and get behind us, we're going to just be full of confidence. So yeah, having a big crowd on, on the air will be great for us. So look forward to it. I know it's tough for you as a player, but do you want to give us a prediction? How you see the game going, maybe? 1-0 or 2-1. Donny. Liam. I think I'm going to go 1-0. Liam, Cam, thank you for your company. And thank you at home for watching as well. As Cam says, get behind the boys tomorrow and urge them on to three points. It's Rovers against Portsmouth.